Hello dear filmovers, welcome to Filmhead which will provide you all kinds of information about newly released movie on internet, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, HBO Max or any other OTT platform or in theater worldwide. Let's start our today's topic for top 10 zombie movies. Number 10. Army of the Dead Snyder's drab horror thriller on Netflix follows a taut group of mercenaries as they penetrate a zombie-infested Las Vegas. A military truck and two newlyweds celebrating their nuptials while driving down a Nevada highway collide in a creative opening scenario in Army of the Dead. A bit of dialogue reveals that the convoy has recently come from Area 51 and that their undefined payload is so dangerous that their military-grade weapons won't make much of an impact. When the large container holding that deadly passenger is damaged, it opens, and the soldiers who survived the accident are pretty quickly turned into the undead before climbing a hill to set their sights on the city of Sin, Las Vegas. Army of the Dead arguably has a gonzo excess, and a certain kind of end-of-the-world spectacle, maybe borrowed from Planet of the Apes, that could be down to the famous Vegas-scale replica of the Statue of Liberty. But there is something weirdly and oppressively uninspired in the CGI world. A continuous two-and-a-half-hour splurge of generic zombie content, which itself feels a bit zombie-ish. With a Vegas heist movie like Ocean's Eleven, there were a few brain cells in play, at least theoretically. People had to be outsmarted. Strategy had to be deployed. Double crosses had to be disclosed and apparent betrayals revealed to be part of the plan. Despite its remarkable length, Army of the Dead is a pretty deliberate, lean movie that effectively blends the heist genre with the zombie one. There's also a sense that Snyder is playing with political and topical themes without having much to say about any of them. Number 9. Dawn of the Dead In the first moments of the narrative, Anna greets a small neighbor girl. The shot is kept a fraction of a second longer than seems normal as the girl skates away on her in lines, giving us the impression that something bad is going to happen to her. And does, as the next morning she attacks Anna's boyfriend, and Anna barely escapes with her life. After zombies roam the streets, newscasters fight hysteria and neighborhoods burn, Anna eventually finds herself part of a small group in the local shopping mall. Things are looking bleak for humanity in this sequel to Night of the Living Dead. The infrastructure that makes our modern world function is breaking down. Citizens blockade themselves into fortified buildings while experts and leaders beg the populace to destroy dead relatives. Destroy them before they can arise as zombies. The movie consists mostly of dialogue and character scenes, alternating with violent attacks by zombies. The movie wisely doesn't give us too many of those scenes where one guy wanders off by himself when we're mentally screaming, stick together. And although there is a cute dog, at least it's made useful in the plot. Of course, the movie makes full use of the shock shot where a zombie suddenly appears in foreground from out of nowhere. Numerous zombies allow for a variety of scenarios, such as the one that followed Roger while he filled the helicopter. Sadly, the ravenous corpse must scale a few crates in order to get to him before rising into the rotor. After all, hopefully someone yelled at the flyboy for landing so close to a barrier. Dawn of the Dead works, and it delivers just about what you expect when you buy your ticket. My only complaint is that its plot flatlines compared to the 1979 version, which was trickier, wittier, and smarter. Romero was not beyond drawing comparisons between mall patrons and zombies. In the updated version, the mall merely serves as a convenient setting, but there are still a few Muzak-related jokes. Number 8 28 Days Later 28 Days Later is a zombie masterpiece film. Visually spectacular. This film is flawless in every way. It cannot be faulted. A highly contagious, aggression-inducing virus called the Rage Virus is unleashed in Great Britain after an infected chimpanzee is freed from its cage in a laboratory in Cambridge by a group of animal rights activists. Within seconds of exposure after freeing the enraged chimp, one of the activists succumbs to the virus and immediately infects another. Over the following hours and days, it spreads rapidly and becomes an epidemic, resulting in total societal collapse. After liberating lab animals from their cages, activists discover too late that the creatures are infected with an anger virus, which makes them violent, ferocious killers. Humans are soon infected by the virus, and when Jim Killian Murphy, a man, awakens in an abandoned hospital and ventures outside, he discovers a desolate London. He discovers from ancient windblown newspapers about a virus that turned humanity against itself as he traverses Piccadilly Circus and crosses Westminster Bridge in a succession of startling scenes, both of which feature no other people in sight. 28 Days Later, which begins as a great science fiction film and continues as an intriguing study of human nature. Wandering London, 
Shouting for anyone else, he eventually encounters Selena, Naomi Harris, and Mark, who have avoided infection and explain the situation. Darwinians will observe that a virus that acts within 20 seconds will not be an efficient survivor. The host population will soon be dead and along with it, the virus. Number 7 28 weeks later. People are very hard on this film, and honestly a lot of these reviews appear to be written by people who didn't watch it until the end 28 days later is, and always will be one of the best sci-fi zombie horror films ever made. Any zombie media that appeared after this was heavily inspired by that film, and despite many having real blockbuster budgets, they still struggle to shine a light on the budget classic 28 days later. What always amazes me about zombie movies is they always run faster than Usain Bolt and should be entered for the Olympics. Not only that, but they never eat each other which would give a plentiful supply of meat. This moving film contains chills, thrills, horror, and lots of blood and gore. The flesh-eating mutant's appearance deliver the goods plenty of screams, shocks. Don's adolescent daughter leaves the green zone with her younger brother, and they go back to their former house in a deserted London. They locate their mother there, who turns out to be infected with a virus. When the green zone and its surroundings turn into a battlefield, there is a panic. The command to stop selective targeting is delivered following a transition to Condition Red. One of the film's great strengths is the way it uses familiar London sites and sites, old and new, ranging from St. Paul's, a Black and Nelson's column and Tower Bridge to the Gherkin, the Millennium Bridge, and the new Wembley Stadium. Number 06. Hashtag Alive. Alive is a zombie film, the feature debut of director Joe I.L. Hyun, adapted from the script of Alone, an upcoming American horror movie. The rapid spread of an unknown infection has left an entire city in ungovernable chaos, but one survivor remains alive in isolation. The story begins with O.H. June W.O. waking up alone in his family's apartment, starting his day only to find he's in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. I.L. chose zombie film, hashtag alive, has occasional thrills, but it could stand out much more if it had a little personality or a wrinkle to offer to the canon of zombie apocalypses in movies. Instead, Hashtag Alive only lurches toward mediocrity, and while the portrayal of a guy being quarantined due to a fatal infection is sympathetic, the blood-covered zombies are far more entertaining to watch. When a mysterious virus turns his fellow citizens into flesh-eating monsters, Junyu chooses survival. From the beginning, he tells himself that he will survive, and organizes his food, insulates himself indoors, and even drinks some of Dad's fancy booze. Their survival is their primary concern, which is highlighted by the two compelling lead performances, the film's straightforward message, and Matt Naylor's script's constrained plot. One of those zombie flicks, Hashtag Alive, only views the end of the world as a test of hope, which the characters occasionally find difficult to choose, particularly since they frequently have to repel oncoming swarms of zombies. Horrifying as the imagery of people biting out each other's jugular veins is, especially to a wimp like me who normally doesn't watch this type of stuff. Number 05. Gangnam Zombie Gangnam Zombie is the latest single-location horror flick about The Walking Dead. The gravely serious opening sequence, which is a preview of what's to come for these sudden survivalists, doesn't quite convey the movie's overall tone, though. Though generally speaking, zombie apocalypses are serious affairs, here you should anticipate more humor than pure excitement. Citizens from upscale Gangnam and Seoul start experiencing unusual and terrifying symptoms, devolving into inhuman creatures, leaving only a few survivors with the possibility to make it out alive. It seems unlikely that Gangnam Zombie will be the only film to make use of the pandemic, nor will it be the first. The general tone is solemn but not depressing, and director, co-writer, and producer Lee Soo-sung at least spares the audience the pre-installed apocalyptic aesthetic prevalent in other similar movies. The movie never loses sight of its goal, zombies finding their way into a building and creating pandemonium. The task is simple, and the execution is even simpler. The survivors have no time to speculate about the zombie's origin, so once Hai and Suk and his peers spot their ferocious visitors, the movie maintains a steady pace and provides adequate action. Out of all the movie's shortcomings, the greatest is the zombies themselves. You can look forward to questionable makeup and, most bizarrely, vampire-like teeth. Number 04. Dead Snow The buddies had everything they needed for a great Easter getaway. A cabin, plenty of beer, skis, a snowmobile, a toboggan, and a good balance of both sexes. None of them had expected to survive to return home, for sure. But there were other ideas for the Nazi zombie battalion that prowled the slopes around Oxford. 
Driven away into the mountains by an angry mob in 1945, Colonel Herzog and his evil SS are now peckish for fresh meat. Heads roll, blood flows, guts fly, and if you're a man, this scene may prove particularly painful. Dead Snow is currently the second most popular movie at the Norwegian box office, ironically behind a very serious Second World War movie called Max Manus. A great little counterbalance to all these plays on the Second World War that masquerade as having deep social commentary, but are little more than showcases for conceited Hollywood stars as Dead Snow. The snow is sprayed, spattered, and eventually drenched with the red stuff, with these ghouls vulnerable to bodily damage in addition to the traditional headshots. This film has sequel in some volume. Dead Snow 2 is full of excessive and extremely grotesque zombie violence. It's definitely not a film for everyone. Dead Snow 2 picks up when it is nasty enough to be silly. Overkill is the nature of the film's evil dead. The fact that the zombie squad's members are ostensibly sympathetic would be a good thing. But they're so gawky and earnest that you keep expecting, nay, hoping that one of them gets dispatched by a brain-nibbling anti-Semite. Number 03. Resident Evil. Resident Evil is a zombie movie set in the 21st century and therefore reflects several advances over 20th century films. For example, in 20th century slasher movies, knife blades make a sharpening noise when being whisked through thin air. The movie is Dawn of the Dead crossed with John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars, with zombies not as ghoulish as the first and trains not as big as the second. There's so many twists and turns throughout too, with my jaw often being left wide open from shock. It never let up as to what was going to happen next, and a severe deviation from the plot of the games more than likely helped with this. It became its own beast. Resident Evil has total six volumes from Resident Evil 2002 to Resident Evil The Final Chapter in 2016. Alice a Project Woman is the main character of this film with fighting moment along zombies. Alice is not affected by zombie when they bite her. The characters have no small talk. Their dialogue consists of commands, explanations, exclamations, and ejaculations. Yes, an ejaculation can be dialogue. If you live long enough, you may find that happening frequently. Picking up after Resident Evil, Retribution, Alice, Mila Jovovich, is the only survivor of what was meant to be humanity's final stand against the undead. Now, she must return to where the nightmare began, the Hive in Raccoon City, where the Umbrella Corporation is gathering its forces for a final strike against the only remaining survivors of the apocalypse. Despite being called the final chapter, the end of the film inevitably leaves things open for further adventures for Alice. Number 02. World War Z. It is a solid film, a terror story plenty of suspense, action, and restless horror, and including a lot of CGI with state-of-art special effects. World War Z, in contrast, is just bloody eye and ear candy. I realize it's problematic to review a film on the basis of what it might have been, but when that same film substitutes a vision that's vastly less intriguing and original than the one offered by its source, it's a fair tactic. And what's on screen here is just another zombie picture gigantic but otherwise unremarkable. In World War Z, Forster's close-up camera sways all over the place to create unneeded excitement. Yet the majority of the shots are David lean on coffee panoramas of computer-generated zombies swarming ant-like up walls and over barriers and bringing down computer-generated choppers. The last set piece finds three people breaking into a lab that is taken over by a few dozen drowsy, inattentive flesh snatchers. It moves slowly. Everything is silent. It is terrible. It functions. You do not always get very far when you try to reinvent the wheel. Just take a look at the cool yet limited number of special zombies that frequently appear to shake things up. There's the poison-spewing gas bag that needs to be strategically killed from a distance and the pouncing lurker that picks off straying party members and must be knocked off by a teammate. While the PvE campaign of World War Z occupies much of the game, there is also a relatively standard PvP option. Except for a few rounds of each of the five possibilities, none of the games, which include your typical round of deathmatch, king of the hill, and even a vaccine collecting mode, kept my attention. Number 1. Train to Bus On. Train to Bus On is a most horrible as well as emotional zombie film ever. Yun Sang Ho, a South Korean director's Train to Busan, is the most purely entertaining zombie film in some time, finding echoes of George Romero's and Danny Boyle's work but delivering something unique for an era in which kindness to others seems more essential than ever. It is, in many respects, exactly what World War Z ought to have been. A terrifying prophecy of the end of the world and a challenge to consider what, if anything, truly defines humanity. 
Train to Busan is a harrowing zombie horror thriller that follows a group of terrified passengers fighting their way through a countrywide viral outbreak while trapped on a suspicion-filled, blood-drenched bullet train ride to Busan, a southern resort city that has managed to hold off the zombie hordes, or so everyone hopes. The claustrophobic tension of Train to Busan is amplified after a brilliantly staged sequence in a train station in which our surviving travelers learn that the entire country has gone brain hungry. It has another volume as named Peninsula or Train to Busan 2. Interestingly, Peninsula isn't a straight-up sequel but rather a standalone movie that takes place in the same universe as the first film. So while there aren't any familiar faces returning from Train to Busan, there is plenty of zombie action and serious life or death stakes. Too quickly, Peninsula becomes another movie altogether when our heroes discover that there are a lot more than zombies left on this side of civilization. Peninsula is at its best when it's focusing on Yun's visual sense related to zombie action. The intensity of train cars filling with zombies that may then come tumbling through windows gave Train to Busan its energy, and Peninsula finds power in similar moments.